Welcome to LeetCode's Blind Created 75, where I'll be solving the top 75 LeetCode questions. This question is called Jump Game, and here's the question. Given an array of non-negative integers, you are initially positioned at the first index. Each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position. Determine if you are able to reach the last index. We're given a bunch of numbers like this, and we want to start at the beginning. Here we know that we can either move one point or two, here we know we can move one, two, or three, so on and so forth, and we want to find out, hey, can we reach this last point here? Here we can. In our second example, we can't because the maximum that we can get to is actually this fourth index, but at that point, we can't go any further. All right, so there's a lot of approaches to going about this problem, so I'm going to go to the whiteboard to try to explain some of them. Here's my Jumpman diagram. And this is the array that he wants to jump. At each point, is going to indicate how far he can jump from that index point. So let's first indicate the index numbers down here. And immediately, the naive approach would, might be to write some sort of recursive function to just check at each point, every single next point that he can go and recursively call how far he can go. So say that we have some sort of recursive function or um, call it something like this. Really, all we'll need to pass is the index number position, right? So like position. Now, what's going to be our base case? Well, the base case is when this position equals the ending number. And that's going to be a 4. So we should probably initialize that somewhere. We'll just say like n equals length of nums minus one and say, hey, like if our position equals the n, then we could return a true. Now, what could we do to do the recurs recursion? I'm just going to write in pseudocode, but it'd be something like, well, we have a maximum number that we can jump, right? So that would be max jump would be the nums of the position. And basically we'll run a for loop to say for i in range of i to the max j plus 1 because at this point, if he can move two, then we know that he can go one or two right there, right? So we need to add one there. Um, and essentially, the call would be like, okay, if what we recursively call for position plus the i, if this returns a true, then we can return a true here. Otherwise, we're able to get through this whole loop, so let's we'll return a false. So this is like the recursive, recursive solution, right? And all what happens is we'll start with two. This is like going to be recurse position uh, zero, right? And then we'll start with okay, hey, what about one? Cause we call one. At one, we'll say hey, what about here at one? Then it's like two. Then here. Cursively, it just continues on until we finally hit our 4 1. That's when it's going to hit this base condition and we'll say, oh, return true, return true, return true, return true, and it returns a true. Otherwise, if we never get to this thing, it's always just going to return a false. So what, the stack is going to continue on to return a false. Yeah, so it's something like that. But obviously, this is really inefficient. And you can pretty easily see why. Like, we're going to be recalling a lot of these numbers. Like, we'll go, hey, we'll try, try this one, you know, try this one. And then at this point, we'll say, hey, try, try this one again, and this one again. And this becomes like an exponentially exploding time complexity. And time complexity is something like 2 of n. And that's just too large for, for what we want to do here. So one way we could reduce that time complexity is uh, use memoization, right? And I guess I'll just get rid of this. 
we could have some sort of DP array. to indicate like which points have we been able to visit. So we know like from the beginning, we can definitely reach the first one. Start with just initializing false for everything. And we'll still do the recursion, but whenever we mark one of these guys and say, have we visited before? So maybe we have like a visited set or something like that. If we've already seen gone through like one of the recursive calls for this index, say one, we don't ever need to do that again, right? Because whatever we've marked it at this point, since we've already recursively gone through the whole stack and we, um, we can mark whatever this point's going to be, we never need to call it again. So that reduces a lot of the, the repeats. So it, it still be the same recursion. All we do though is mark these DP um, indexes whenever, whenever we're finished. So if it's say we like call all these all, all up to here and we say, okay, hey, mark this one as true. It's gonna return and mark this one as true, blah, blah, blah. And each time we'll say, hey, we already visited these indexes. So the next time it tries to go, they'll be like, oh, we've already visited here. So um, we, don't, we don't need to do that. And at the very end, you can just return the, the value at the last index for, for our DP array. Okay, um, so, th so that would be like a recursive memoization solution. But that's still not going to be efficiently um, sufficient, sufficiently efficient. It's, it's actually going to end up being a n of squared power um, because basically what, what you're doing is you're going to check um, for two, check these two, for three, check these three, for one, check this one, for one, check, check one. Um, so it ends up being kind of a nested for loop. All right, so that's not going to work for really, really large arrays. Can we do better than that? So other than recursive solutions and dynamic programming solutions, is there a better way that we could do this? Could we do this in one pass? And there's a method basically called the greedy method where we can think about well, what, what actually matters here when we're going down this array? Essentially, what we're trying to figure out is, at this point, how far could this man, this jump man, go on this index? See, at zero point, um, at zero index, we know that he can get up to two. So it's like zero, two, right? And that's that. What about at the next index? Well, we know at that point, he can also get to max point zero two. But say that these were zeros. Well, at two here, we know that he can't go any further, so it's just the same. And at three, it's also the same here. It'd be here. But notice how our max jump at this point has indicated to us that we can't even get here. Right, so this loop is over. We know that this, this can't be done. Um, otherwise, if this was a 1 here, well, it would be the same thing because the max would be 2. But what, what about if this was a 1? Well, at this point then, we'd say, oh, the max jump is actually here. So at 3, we'll say, oh, yeah, we can get here. And at 3, 3 will say we can get 4. And once we see that this max number, we'll call it max jump, once we see this is what greater or equal to n minus one, we can say, yes, this jump man can get to the end. We can return a true here. Uh, return true. <sighs> so if you think about this, we could do this all in one pass. And all that recursive stuff, all these checking like each possible points is really unnecessary because if we can get, if this max jump is greater than this index point that we're on, we know we can get here. Like if he can get here, we know that he can get here and here. If we can get um, here, then we know we can get here, 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 here. We know that. So this is just like a greedy method where we're only storing the thing that, that really matters, which is 
what's going to be the maximum amount that he could jump. So there's no reason to have a DP array or, or anything like that. All right, so now that we have our intuition, let's go ahead and start solving. And I'm going to do just two approaches. First, the recursive solution using memoization. And it's kind of cheating because I'm also using a DP array. Uh, you'll see what I mean. So the first thing is let's initialize the length of nums to be n. And if n is less than 2, meaning that it's either 0 or, or 1, we could just return a true. Because if it's only 1 point, then we know we can already get there. And if there's nothing in there, I guess that should be a true as well. Um, anyway, uh, now we need to write our some sort of helper method, right? And before we do that, let's first create a DP array. Um, we'll say, hey, for um, I, or I should say for whatever in range of N, just make them all false. Okay, and actually the beginning we could say, well, at zero, we should know that's a true. So we'll write a recursive helper method. And what we're gonna do is pass in the position as well as the, the DP array. So um, let's think if I, I guess we should start with in indicating what our max jump is going to be. And that's going to be nums of the position. So this is the number of possible jumps you can make. So for I in range of one to the max jump plus one, let's say um, our output um, since we know that we get here, it's going to be position plus the i is going to equal true because we can definitely get here. Um, and after that, we want to recursively uh, call again position plus i as well as not the output. Sorry, this should be dp. Um, pass in the dp. But we want to use memoization to make sure that we're not going to be recalling some of these, right? So. We'll have a visited set to say, okay, if we visited here, then then don't, don't call this again. So if um, position plus i not in visited, then we can call it. Otherwise, we shouldn't. Finally, when we're finished, we know that we visited, so we can add that to the visit add. Like add position plus, well, it's just the position right here, right? So now that should fill up our, our DP array and we'll call that here saying pass in starting from zero with the DP and just return the um, DP n minus one, which is going to be the last index number on this array. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to see if that works. I'm not completely sure if it will. says we're out of range. Okay, so I guess one thing we need to make sure is this range isn't going to be too too large. So um, say if position plus i is greater than n minus 1, then we'll, we'll break the loop. So let's try that. Oh, shouldn't have submitted that. Visited. Yes. Just run our test case. Okay, it looks like it works for our test case, but you'll see that this is better than just regular recursion, but it's not gonna pass all the test cases uh, because it's still a time complexity of n squared, regardless of whether we have our, our memoization or not. Like you can see, you pass most of the cases, but this huge one, it's not able to do it. Okay, so how could we solve that? Well, we've gone through the greedy method, right? So Let's go through that coding instead. And first we need to initialize a couple of variables. We'll need the max jump, like we indicated before. We'll need the n for the last position, as well as some number to indicate our iteration. So max jump is going to be 0. And I'm going to make it the length of nums minus 1, because I'm more concerned about that index point at the end, as well as i equaling 0 start. OK, so while i is uh, 
less than or equal to the max jump. Because we want to make sure that in this loop, this i that we're on is less than the max jump or equal to it. And i is less than or equal to n. Right? And I, I suppose it, we don't actually care about that last index point, so we can just make it less than n. So if at this point the max jump is greater than, if the max jump is greater than um, or equal to the n. Oh, okay, right. So if at this point we say, yes, the max jump has exceeded the length, then we can just break our loop because we don't need to see it anymore if we can get to the end. Otherwise, we're going to calculate our max jump, which is going to be either the max of max jump or or the i, which is going to be the index number we're on, plus the number that he could move forward. So that would just be the addition of nums i. So whatever the maximum between that, we'll take that. Um, and that should really be it. Uh, at the very end, all we need to do is check, is our max jump greater or equal to the n, which is the last index point. So let me see if that works. Yep. Oh, right, we, we need to increase our iterator. My mistake. And it looks like it works. Let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go. So anyways, I think that should explain it well enough. There's a lot of variations to this problem, jump game two, jump game three, and I think I'll go over those eventually. Just know that this is kind of the um, one of the, those questions you start thinking about first recursively and realizing down the line that you don't even need recursion. Doing a greedy method is even better than a dy dynamic programming method. So I hope that gives you some intuition about these problems. Um, I, otherwise, just going to end it here. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.